today I want to talk uh, about CSS Grid, as you can obviously guess from this title. So we recently shipped our first uh, Grid code in production, and I'd like to make a quick retrospective on what was good about it, what was uh, challenging, and basically how Grid can help you solve your uh, layer requirements. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm a UI designer uh, and front-end developer. Um, I work at Stripe, and for those of you who don't know Stripe, we basically do online payments um, the right way. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we've recently updated our site uh, logo type and, and visual language. Um, the goal was to uh, improve the structure and the content, uh, to refresh the brand by making something unique and visually interesting, and to create a set of patterns that would contribute to build um, a strong identity. And Part of it relies on these new tilted backgrounds made of multiple stripes, as we obviously call them, um, and that you can find on all these new pages uh, with a slightly different treatment. Um, we also introduced um, a whole set of new uh, animations and interactions, which apparently inspired some sites. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we use all these animations and patterns to create a consistent look and feel across the site, um, which means we often, we often tweak these patterns to accommodate the various styles of the pages. Um, so here on the connect page, uh, for example, the header stripes in the background uh, almost look like light rays uh, coming from the sides. And I'd like to take a moment to analyze how we made them. Um, okay, so first I removed uh, all the content so we can really focus on uh, the background and try to understand how it's built. So the whole uh, background is actually just a big grid uh, container that's transformed using a skew function. So if you use the grid inspector um, in Firefox, we can clearly visualize the grid. We have five rows um, and ten columns, and we just tilt the entire thing by 12 degrees. I'm also going to disable the, that rotation for now uh, to make the structure even easier to understand. So we can now clearly see this big grid where we can conveniently place as many stripes as we want exactly where we want. So using the inspector again, I'm just going to highlight three stripes uh, placed on the grid. For example, I'm just placing the first stripe on the first row, and I simply make it span three columns. And then the same principle applies to uh, the other stripes. I can then just apply uh, a background gradient on all the stripes to create the lighting effect, and I'm basically done. So if you look at the code, it is now a lot easier than what we used to do. So first, the markup is super simple. Um, it's just a div and a bunch of uh, spans representing the stripes. Now, for the CSS, it's just a matter of um, defining a template grid and placing each span individually in the appropriate rows and columns. So on the parent, we use the grid shorthand property and the repeat function to easily define five rows of 200 pixels and 10 columns of one FR. So the FR unit I'm using here represents a fraction of the available space. Um, so in this case, it's exactly the same as using 10%. And then for the child elements, we just explicitly insert them in the grid. So as we can see from this uh, specific example, grid comes with many different properties and shorthands. And while you could always use the same syntax for everything, um, relying on the appropriate uh, shorthand or, uh, or property, or long-form <laughs> long property, uh, makes the code shorter and more expressive. So, for example, uh, Gridaria lets you define uh, the start and end values for both rows and columns into a single declaration. So that line means start on the third row, span three columns, end on the next row, and on the last column. So this last value I'm using here, uh, minus one, uh, is super useful in grid, as it allows you to count in reverse, which means you can cover an entire track without knowing the exact number um, of rows or columns. So that was for placing all the stripes um, in the grid background. And now that all the positioning is done, the last thing to do is just to skew the entire background. So to do that, we just transform the entire uh, grid container uh, to create a tilted effect, and we give it a background gradient. And that's all. So compared to what we used to do, this is a lot nicer. 
And to be clear, it's not just easier to code, it's also a lot more robust and maintainable. Um, for example, our previous implementation relied on position absolute, and that led to many subtle visual flows, like a one pixel gap um, between two stripes caused by a slightly different rounding on two percentages. So just by using uh, uh, grid instead, we avoid a whole bunch of issues. And additionally, the grid implementation makes it a lot nicer to build a responsive structure. So here, for example, we have a mobile-first approach where we define five columns uh, by default, and then when the viewport is wider than 1,000 pixels, we update the template to define 10 columns instead by simply increasing our custom property inside a media query. So that's both super uh, convenient and super efficient, and it allows you to dynamically change the design significantly with just a few rules. So that's one use case where uh, grid really shines and proves to be a much better solution uh, than any other method. And the more you use grid, the more you can see how it can elegantly solve many uh, tricky layout issues. So for example, this is another use case where grid made a ton of sense. Um, so we have this structure uh, with a small introduction, a paragraph, and then a bunch of animated charts uh, illustrating the various flows Stripe Connect enables. Um, so if you use the grid inspector uh, again in Firefox, we can see that the whole thing is just a big grid and we can clearly visualize um, the gap and, and grid tracks. And the part I want to focus on is this specific area where we have two elements in the same cell. We have um, the pattern in the background and then the chart above it. So these are two separate elements because I needed to move the chart left and right uh, during the animation without moving the background with it. And that's another thing that uh, Grid makes super easy to do. So we have a simplifying markup at the top and then the styles at the bottom. So on the parent, I just define my template grid, which has a fixed column of 340 pixels, a, fixed, a fluid column, sorry, uh, that takes the rest of the available space, and then a gap between these two columns of 40 pixels. So the gap uh, shorthand property I'm using here uh, is basically the same as the previous grid gap shorthand property, um, but which is now also available for flexbox and multi-column, so it's kind of a big deal. Um, anyway, so after that, I just select my two elements, which both have an ID starting with diagram, and I just place uh, both of them in the exact same spot by forcing both of them to start on the third row and second columns. So this is effectively a replacement for position absolute. You don't have to take elements out of the flow anymore. Just place them in the same uh, grid area and you can stack them easily. And that means you even have access to Z-index. So if for some reason I wanted my background to be above the diagram, I could simply give it as an index. And to be clear, that's not just a nicer way to uh, stack elements. You can do many things with grid uh, that position absolute simply cannot do. For example, with grid, you can center all child elements, horizontally and vertically, even with variable widths and heights, and all of that in literally one line of CSS. So in case you're not familiar with the uh, place items properties, it's a new shorthand uh, property for uh, align items and justify items. And if you only specify one value, in this case, uh, center, it's just gonna use that for the missing value. So that's super convenient, and you obviously have the same thing for align uh, content and justify content with the place content shorthand property. So as an example, say you wanted to stack all the elements in the center of the body. Well, you could simply place all of them in the same cell and center them automatically, no matter their sizes, with place items center. So, as we could see so far, most of the work um, in grid is done by the container. So instead of dealing with each element individually for their positioning, we do almost everything right from the container. And that is a crucial difference between grid and other layout methods like Flexbox, for example. So to illustrate that, let's take another example from the same connect page. Um, so we have here three columns with an icon, a title, and a paragraph. If we highlight the grid, we can see the gaps, rows, 
and auto columns that have been dynamically generated to uh, accommodate the content. So usually, this structure used to require um, some extra markup to wrap the content uh, of each column in order to display them side by side. But with grid, that's not even necessary anymore. Since the structure is now defined by the container right in CSS, we can keep a very clean markup without adding several wrappers only needed for um, the presentation of the content. So here, we only have the semantic markup actually needed to describe the content, which means we have a very flat and a very simple structure. As for the CSS, we don't even explicitly place our content in the grid here. We simply let the content flow into the template rows and auto columns defined by the container. So the auto flow uh, keywords means here that we fill the grid by columns instead of rows, and that each generated column is going to take the same fraction of the available space. So in this example, um, after the third uh, element filling the first column, it automatically creates another column of the same size, and it keeps doing that for uh, the next elements. So that illustrates how, in grid, most of the work is done by the container, and how your markup isn't really dictated anymore by your presentation needs. Now, if we come back uh, again to our initial markup, you might be wondering how you're supposed to create um, a fallback for all the browsers that don't support grid with, with such a, a minimal markup. Because in order to uh, create these three columns with Flexbox or Float or whatever, you really need a container element uh, for each column. So you're probably going to do something like this. Now, the previous CSS grid code won't work anymore if we add these new uh, uh, div wrappers. But it would be really unfortunate to change our grid logic just because of some temporary fallback needs. So instead, what we can do is to literally ignore these wrappers right in the CSS grid code. So thanks to display contents, these div wrappers will basically be replaced by their child elements. And so the initial grid will continue to work as if there was no wrappers uh, at all in the markup. So that's really good, because um, if you eventually drop support for uh, all the browsers, or if you write all your fallback rules uh, after all your grid code, because you know, maybe that was not the priority for your target audience, etc., well, you don't have to change your grid logic. It just keeps working as expected. Now, we haven't really uh, touched yet on how to create these fallback rules. So the typical way to handle that is to write uh, your fallback rules first, and then to use CSS feature queries to override um, the fallback with new properties and values. Now, the obvious downside of that approach is that it forces literally everyone to download um, all these fallback rules that might be completely useless for the vast majority of your customers. Um, and additionally, uh, there's a good chance that even if you decide uh, in the future you don't need all these fallback rules anymore because literally 100% of your visitors uh, use um, a grid-friendly browser, well, I bet you won't feel like manually editing all your style sheet to see the code being shared between the fallbacks and the override and to remove all the code that's not necessary anymore. So don't just make assumptions, check if featured queries are uh, the right way to go for your target audience. Um, but for us, it was crystal clear that this was not the optimal way of serving uh, fallback rules. Our uh, analytics made it clear we have a fairly technical audience, and honestly, almost everyone was already using um, a grid-friendly browser. So instead of using uh, CSS feature queries, we chose to create a separate fallback style sheet in JavaScript and to insert it dynamically only if it's actually needed. Uh, we can't rely on the CSS.supports method because that might not be supported by a browser that actually needs the fallback style sheet. So we just check if the grid um, property exists in the style object. Um, so to be clear, this approach is kind of a trade-off because it's going to be a little bit slower for browsers that actually need the fallback style sheet, but it's going to be a little bit faster for modern browsers as they only download what's truly needed. Um, and uh, additionally, all the fallbacks are completely isolated from the main style sheet, so we can just decide to stop serving fallback rules in the future if we want to. So it's really up to you to decide who you are optimizing for, but for us, that approach made a lot of sense.
So that was a lot of technical details and maybe a lot of new properties and values. And you might be wondering if it's actually worth learning all this new stuff and potentially spending a lot of time um, writing fallback rules, etc. So my recommendation is yes, take the plunge immediately, even if you're not comfortable at all with Grid. Um, the Conic page we analyzed was my first uh, Grid project, my first real Grid project. And while I knew the spec pretty well before, there is a huge difference between knowing and practicing. And it's only after shipping a real project in production you will really understand the value Grid brings you to your layouts. And I can guarantee it's going to be a breath of fresh air in your front-end journey. So enjoy, and thank you. <laughs>